Hello folks and welcome to part 3 of our G-Skill build. Now, in the previous part, we made this, which is the starting structure for the main part of the build. And this is all the metal work, so what we're going to be doing now is the acrylic. And what does that involve? Well, we're going to be taking this chunky bad boy, which is 20mm thick acrylic, and turning it into a crystal distro plate that's similar to the pattern found on the G-Skill heat spreaders. And this is going to be sitting on top of an acrylic motherboard tray, which is going to be cut out with all sorts of triangular designs and struts. And then it's going to be flanked by some more crystal work, which we'll be making out of this, which is 10mm acrylic. So we're going to be taking this, doing a front layer and a rear. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to be using the clear or if I'm going to be using frosted, so I'll do that at some point during the log itself. But they're going to have LEDs running along the inside of these plates. That way we can have that lovely rainbow or even just static colour more likely that the actual heat spreaders themselves have. So, order of operations. What are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to start off by doing the crystal distro plate with the 20mm thick acrylic. Now, what we need to do for that is a double-sided operation. And so to keep it nice and accurate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine the backside first, which contains all the screw holes. We're going to have the M4 threads and any kind of mounting points in there. And then what we're going to do is on either end, I've modeled in some holes for dowel pins. And those are going to be precisely machined so that they line up with the holes on my bed. That way, I can then flip the part and have it aligned exactly where I want it to be. And it should be able to do all the crystal work from there on, there on in. After that, we're going to sort out the motherboard tray, which is also going to be made from 10mm acrylic. That's a very simple one just because it's a single-sided operation. And then we've got another big double-sided job with the ones on the side. And I'm going to use exactly the same technique for those, just 10mm is the only difference. The only thing is, this is a very long machining job. The estimates are between 6 and 13 hours. So hopefully we won't have any machine interruptions and it will be able to work fine. And let's just make sure that I don't accidentally get the tool pass wrong and then send my machine through one of the clamps and destroy my tools because I've only got one of these ball end mills because I'm using a special polished edge one so that I can get a really clear finish. So if I destroy that, there's no hope. I will not be able to get another one. So fingers crossed I don't mess it up. So enough waffle, let's get this on the machine and get it cutting.
Now, I know I say this every time, but I am absolutely thrilled with how these plates came out. The pattern is much stronger than I'd originally kind of expected it to be, and it really picks up the light perfectly and emulates the heat spreader design, I think, pretty spot on. So the way I'm handling the lighting on these is I've got an LED channel that runs through here, and I've made it wide enough so that I can have LEDs that face up and down at the same time. So the effect there is I get the LEDs going, lighting up this section, and then it flows naturally because they're addressable. I can have a wave going across them, and that puts the light onto this side. Now that's quite a big deal because this rig is going to be open on the front and on the back. So I want to make sure that the lighting is going to be visible in these sort of areas as well. Now it's not going to be as strong just because these are, you know, there's a lot of cutouts here. So by the time it reaches the bottom, the light will largely have diffused out. But it's nice to have a little bit of an effect. And it's quite cool that you can have one color maybe on the bottom and a separate one on the top. Now I was a little bit cheeky here and off camera did a bunch of other machining, mostly because it's exactly the same process as you've seen before. So not particularly novel. And we've got tons of machining already in this video. But I made one of these, which is a distro plate. So this is the one that connects all the main components to the side. So you have a load of ports. This is the front. So I've got a clear side on the front here. We're going to have the ports for the GPUs, for the radiators are on the back. And then I've also made a pump mount. So this is made out of the 20 millimeter acrylic. And then that literally just fits straight into the DDC. And that's going to be sitting below the cover. So we're nice and out of the way, really simple. And I'm hoping that's going to give some really strong flow and some proper pressure on that. Because DDCs have really high pressure. It should be able to handle this loop really easily, not a problem, and it'll keep it nice and simple. The next step is going to be assembling all these bits, but we're going to save that for part four because there's a huge amount left to do. I've got to do the wiring. I've got to make sure all the panels fit together perfectly. I've got the right screw lengths, uh, making sure that all the countersinks are done, little details here and there, maybe even a couple mods to the motherboard, make it fit more the color scheme if I have time. But that should be quite interesting, and we'll be able to say, take a look at that all later. Of course, as ever, if you want to stay up to date with things, make sure you're subbed to the channel. And also you can check us out on Discord, builds.gg, Facebook, and Instagram. We're always posting up little like work in progress updates during the week and all things like that. So if you want to really make sure that you're on the money, check out those pages. Until then, I'll catch you next time.